you know, um, contrary to my Lebanese heritage, I do begin on time. So. Um, today is Bonnie's birthday, and I know this isn't a Syriac hymn, but if you know it, sing along. Yes. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bonnie. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. You know, one of the things I wanted to do, but we started a little bit later and I had my presentation timed, was to share on the hymns I gave you. But I'll give them to you. You take one of those hymn sheets, you can use that at our adoration time later. But what I also wanted to teach you a Syriac hymn. This is what we sing. We pull it out for a recessional hymn once in a while. But it goes, it's called Amanu Morio. And the English translation's up on top, and the Syriac phonetic, uh, phoneticization, phonetic, phoneticism, I mean, it's phonetics, on the bottom. <clears throat> and Lilio B, uh oh, one of the words is missing. Um, Lilio B Momo. Oh. Sister Natalie, could you edit that on the bottom there? On the I was just saying white, that's all. Oh, okay. hit, the escape, hit the escape button and then just highlight the screen and uh, edit it. We'll just make it bigger. Anyway, while she's doing that, um, <clears throat> no, you can't go into the slideshow. You have to. It's there now. So, um, I thought for our opening prayer, is, um, which was going to be our closing this morning, is we will offer this hymn as our opening prayer, and I'll introduce Sister. <clears throat> Sister, do you need help? Yes, I do. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Sister, thank you. I don't, I don't know That's okay. We'll forgive you. But anyway, <laughs> the words are... <clears throat> oh, there it is. I'll hit, okay, just hit bold. Black. Yeah. Okay. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. The Lord stays with us at dawn and darkness. Um... Oh, what's that now? You don't want to download, sister. Yeah, I'm going to skip it. Well, you just hit down. No, I was moving it away. Oh, I can't. No, no, it's good. Anyway. Oh, you know it. I hear the melody. That's it. Okay, well, we're going to offer that together. Once my technological folks. Okay. What the Syriac words are. Amanu Morio, Amanu Morio, Morio Amanu, Blilio Bimomo. Phonic, phonetics. So we'll sing that together, sisters. <laughs> Sister Natalie Sadie to come and share with you on the divine liturgy, the Corbono, but a particular aspect of the Corbono to help you to deepen your spiritual appreciation of our beautiful Maronite liturgy. So I'm going to hand the sticky microphone over to Sister <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> and uh, she has an Australian accent, so I hope you can understand her. <laughs> If you need interpretation, I'll interpret. Sisters from Sydney, Australia. Yeah. Appreciate it. As far as it goes. As far as it goes. Okay. Well, I don't. I won't be using the slides anyway, so it'll just be my Australian voice. <laughs> if you if you get lost in translation, just let me know. Um, but really, my um, what I wanted to touch upon this afternoon ties in very beautifully with what Mother was saying this morning about our Maronite liturgy being such a beautiful treasure. And I'm going to go one step further and say that it is also 
a school of catechesis, mm -hmm. faith, and prayer. And really, in the Eastern Church, the liturgy is the fount of our Christian life. Mm. So, one of the prayers that I wanted to touch upon today is called <coughs> in Syriac. We're going to start using some Syriac words, Bonnie. So, the Hosoyo. The Hosoyo. And that is spelled H double O S O Y O. Hosoyo. And we, you know what, you read it and you glance over it every Sunday, but you probably don't know where it is or what it means, or what its purpose is in the liturgy. So, Hosoyo in English is known as the prayer of forgiveness. That might give you a hint. So, after, it, it comes right at the beginning of the liturgy, right after we sing the glory to God. So, glory to God. And then once that's finished, Father will usually start the Hosoyo by saying, let us raise glory, honour and praise to the Father most holy, and he'll go on, and that will be the Hosoyo. And as he's doing that, or as the subdeacon is reading that prayer, today Father was incensing. So that's why it's called, so that's, yes, you all, yeah. So when Father starts to incense the altar, that's really your cue of, oh, we're praying the Hosoyo. And... I just wanted to go through today, why, why a Hosoyo? What is the function, what is it? What is the function of the Hosoyo? So basically the Hosoyo has four parts to it, four parts. And they are really very, very beautiful prayers. And we're going to be delving into them. I see you've already um, taken some red uh, Corbono books. We'll need them a little bit later on. But first, I just want to explain what it is that we're praying what it is that we're reading. So there's four beautiful parts. The first one is called promian. Promian is a Greek word. The next one is called cedro. Cedro. The third is called kolo. And the fourth is called etro. Now the first word is Greek. The next three are Syriac words. Now, the promian, the first part, the cedro, the second part, and the etro, the fourth parts, are traditionally chanted or recited by the priest or the deacon or the subdeacon today did it, as Father was incensing the altar. The kolo is sung by us, the congregation. So, what is the hesoyo? Friends, the Hosoyo is very particular to the Maronite Church. For those of you that are Roman Catholic, you won't find it. You won't find the Hosoyo in a Roman Catholic Mass. You won't even find it in a Byzantine liturgy. The Hosoyo is very Maronite. So what is it? If I could take off my glasses right now and put on new glasses, the lens of our Maronite spiritual fathers... That's what the Hosoyo is. The Hosoyo is looking at the liturgy through the eyes of our Maronite spiritual fathers, through the eyes of our Syriac fathers. So it is so, so rich. It is a gold mine and a treasure trove of our faith expression as Maronite Catholics. So I'm going to briefly describe, because I really want us to get into the exercise so that you can benefit from it. But... I want to just briefly describe what each of those four prayers is. So as I said, the Hosoyo starts with the prayer called the Promian. And basically the Promian is an introductory prayer. I already gave you the first line of one of them. Let us raise glory, honour and praise to the Father most holy and his only begotten Son. Like I'm just pulling something out for you. But that's really how it starts. It always starts the same. Let us raise glory, honour and praise. Um, so basically, it's singing the praise of God's goodness. It's extolling his attributes. Especially, and I'm going to be coming back to this, especially relating to each Sunday's celebration. Each Sunday's celebration is touched upon in the Proleon. And you'll see that. You'll see that throughout our liturgical year. The Cedro comes after the Proleon. 
Now, setro is a Syriac word called Siri. It's, it's, not, it's really series. Series. S-E-R-I-E-S. -E -E Just in case my Australian, my Australianisms are getting to you. Um, so, setro means series in English. And basically, the Promian, which is the introductory prayer of the Hosoyo, is preparing us for the setro. And basically, the setro is saying to God, as you've acted in the past, like for instance, you might come across one that says, as you parted the Red Sea for the people of, of, of Israel in the desert, now we ask you, we petition you, O oh Lord, to act it. So it's basically, that's why they call it a series. They're recounting the good deeds of God in the past. And now in light of all that you've done in the past, we ask you, we petition you to act again on behalf of your church, which stands in, in need of, of mercy and help. So that's why it's called Sedro is series. Mm -hmm. What you've done in the past, help us again now in the present. That's the Sedro. This, the next part that comes after the Sedro is called the Golo. And that is also another Syriac word, which literally means voice. Voice. That's what it means, the word Golo. And it's a beautiful prayer that is traditionally chanted. Today we recited it, that's fine. But traditionally it is chanted by us, the congregation. This is when Father gets a break. I mean, usually most priests pray it with the congregation. But this is the part where we are, are in the Hosoya. We're in, very much involved in the Hosoya, in the Kolo. And then the fourth prayer is Etro. Etro, and that is another Syriac word which literally means uh, perfume, fragrance. And you, 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 and you, you recognize it when Father says, um, Lord God, we offer you our prayers and the fragrance of our incense. Um, that's, that's the etro. So that's why it's called, it's actually known in English as the prayer of incense. Um, Father would have been incensing long before <laughs> uh, we get to the etro, but really that's when he makes mention of the incense. In the ethro. So, excuse me. Yes, in the past, they used to have all of these introductions as in each section of. Yes, the I know. And I don't know why they yes. didn't do it in the. No, they didn't do it in the red cord No, but I'm actually what we're going to do today, and I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you identify where they are. Oh, of course. I'm going to help you identify each component and where they fall in the hosoyo, so that even though they're not, the titles aren't written. Um, you, you, you'll know, you'll know it, exactly, yeah, you recognize them, exactly. So what's the function of the Hosoyo? So right now I'm picturing my 94-year-old grandmother. You're 94, right, FIFA? Yeah. <laughs> Not yet, okay. 93, God bless you. Um, so right now I'm picturing my 94-year-old grandmother, who never learned how to read or write. So she was of a good Lebanese peasant stock, and she was a hard worker, good manual worker, but never learned, was not schooled, never learned how to read or write. But she went religiously to church every Sunday. Every Sunday she was there. And she can tell me, down to the detail, the key events of our faith, such as the Passion of Our Lord, she will recount it in great detail, and also even our current season of the Glorious Cross, which she fondly calls in Arabic, Aid salib always. So how did she know all this? It's because she listened. Every week, she listened, week in, week out, to the Sunday Sosoyo and, and to the Bible readings that happened every Sunday. And she picked up the faith. That's how she learned the faith. And friends, our Maronite people for centuries... We didn't always know how to read and write, but how did we know our faith? We knew it because we went religiously to church and the liturgy taught us our faith. So that's what I want to touch upon. The liturgy <coughs> is the primary means of catechizing our people, of passing on the faith. It's also a means for us to look at the Bible from a Maronite perspective and also, it's a way for us and a great source for us 
to deepen our own personal prayer lives. I'm going to touch upon each of these three things in greater detail. But first, how is it a catechetical tool? And when I say catechetical, do you all know what I mean by that? I mean by it's a way we pass on and learn our faith. It's like catechism. But even long before, long before catechisms ever existed, we're all familiar with the nice big brick that came out with John, John Paul, Pope John Paul II. And we didn't always have those books, though. But we learned our faith by chanting the liturgy. Maronites think and pray with the rhythm and flow of the church. We always have. That's what makes it so beautiful. That's what makes it so special. Our faith, friends, is meant to lead us to the liturgy. That's why the Catechism says that the liturgy is the source and summit of our Christian life. It's meant to lead, it's meant to lead us to the liturgy and it's meant to flow from the liturgy. In the Hesoyo, not only are we learning the doctrine of our faith, but we're also learning how to live the moral Christian life. Because if you read it carefully, which is what we're about to do, it speaks of Christian virtues like trust and faith and honour and courage. It's teaching us how to live the moral life. It's, it's extremely powerful. And the, sec the second function that it has is that it's a way that we can interpret the Bible. And I want to give you an example here. We have six Sundays throughout Great Lent. It's one of my, definitely one of my favorite um, seasons in terms of the Hosoyos and the Sunday cycle of readings. It's absolutely beautiful. So you know that with Great Lent, we start Lent with Cana Sunday, with the miracle of the wedding of Cana. And then we go through each Sunday, and each Sunday is a miracle that Jesus performs, the healing of the paralytic, the healing of the leper, the healing of the hemorrhaging woman, the healing of the blind man. All of these healings are taking place throughout Great Lent. But first, we start Lent with the miracle of the wedding of Cana. All of those miracle stories are a brilliant preparation for Easter because Jesus is setting the stage for his own miraculous transformation. So each Sunday is preparing us for the miracle of miracles, Jesus' resurrection. And it's interesting because throughout the, those Sundays, we see divine power coming from Jesus. We see it so beautifully in the hemorrhaging woman. I touched the fringe of his cloak and power went out of me. That divine power that enables him to do these miracles will be the pinnacle of his resurrection. That's what makes his resurrection possible, the fact that he is divine, the divine son of God. So this theme of healing and transformation and divine power are expressed beautifully in each of the Sunday Hosoyos throughout Great Lent. And the Hosoyo invites us, the hearers, to make each Sunday's Bible readings a real part of our spiritual lives. And talking about spiritual lives, it's also meant to deepen our prayer lives, to deepen our spiritual lives. So I mentioned to you earlier those three parts, the Promian, the Cedro, and the Etro, the fourth, the first, second, and fourth parts of the Hosoyo, are traditionally chanted or recited in the liturgy by a priest or a deacon or a subdeacon. But there's no reason why we can't sit with those prayers at other times. Because... Every, every day, these sisters and I, we offer an hour of adoration at different times. And I can't tell you how many times I have personally taken one of those Red Corbono books, the Red Book of Offering, and just sat with the Sunday's Hosoyo that's coming up in preparation for a feast. <coughs> it has been, this exercise alone has been a very personally enriching experience for my for my journey for my faith experience and I know it can be the same for you and the Hosoyo the beautiful thing is about the Hosoyo is that it's not the be all and end all it's just only one aspect of the liturgy but for me as I know it can be for you it's a beautiful springboard 
into a much deeper faith experience, into a much deeper encounter with the Lord. So there are basically four ways that we should all be praying. And I'm going to simplify it today. But it's known by a simple acronym, ACTS. A-C-T-S. Like the Acts of the Apostles. ACTS. So what does A stand for? The letter A. Adoration. A adoration. You got it, sister. It stands for adoration. So we're basically telling God how great he is. How wonderful he is. We're extolling him for his goodness. All of those good things. C. What does C stand for? C stands for contrition. We're asking God for his forgiveness and for his mercy. Because we've sinned. We haven't always made the right choices. T stands for thanksgiving. We're thanking God for all the good things that he gives us, all his spiritual blessings that we go through. I know I do anyway. I often miss them, a lot of them. And I even make it a point. I've come to make it a point. I wasn't always like that, but I came, I've always come to, I've come, I have come to make it a point of thanking him for the trials in my life as well. Even though I'm squirming underneath them and saying, that's enough, Lord. I've actually come to a point where I can thank him for those trials because like a good father, I know that he's trying to teach me something. So I thank him for those trials. And the last letter in that acronym is S. Supplication. Wonderful. Yes, supplication. Usually, oh, supplication is petition where we ask God for what we need. We bring to him the needs, our personal needs, our family, our church, our parishes, etc. Usually people get that back to front. <laughs> Usually people will start by treating God, and I'm sorry to say this a little bit irreverently, but treating God like a bit like a Santa Claus. Rubbing the magic genie. I need, I want, I, you know. So we shouldn't start there. We shouldn't start there. But God wants us to come to him. He's a good father. He wants us to come to him with our needs. But we shouldn't start there. <laughs> he knows them, but he wants us to come with them. But as I said, we shouldn't start there. So, right now, I'm going to divide you all into groups. And this is where we will do our, um, our prayerful exercise <coughs> with, the, uh, with the Red Cord Bornal books. Can I just get by a show of hands? Does anybody need a break after that very long monologue? No. 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 Okay. So I'm just going to divide you into groups, and then I'll give you what, what you need, your instructions, and I'll allocate you in a different part of the hall as well. Okay? One. Two. Just remember your number, okay? One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One, two, three. Okay. okay. So, can I get group all those in group one to stand up, please? I'm sorry, this is sounding like school. But <laughs> so, if you could go over to Mother, where Mother Marla Marie is, take a red book on your way, please. Yeah. Yes, you all need to take a red book. Yeah. Yes, everyone needs to take a red book. Yes, please. Number two, can I get you to stand up, please? And mother is at table number two. If you could make your way to table number two. Yes, where mother is waving at us. Number one, are you all set? Wonderful. Everybody in group number three, please stand up and make your way towards Mother Marla Marie. Yes. Make sure you take a red corbono book on your way. And group number four, lucky loves. Can I get you? You can stay. Group number four, you can stay here. Oh. No. Yes. I will come to you. We don't have one. Hmm? Wonderful. Let me go get you a missile. Yes. So, where are the markets? Oh. The markets. 
No. Are they going to be writing on the sheet? Okay. All right. I'm going to give each of you a different hisoyo because I want this to be enriching for you. Okay? So each of you is going to focus on a different hisoyo. And then you're going to come back together as a group. I'm going to give you some points to reflect on. And then we're all going to benefit from your points of reflection. So this is supposed to be mutually enriching for all of us. Because the Holy Spirit touches us all in different ways. Okay. So, you my friends, group number one. I want you to do the Hosoyo of the Holy Cross or to meditate on the Hosoyo of the Holy Cross. That is pages 610 to 612. 610 to 612. Six ten to six twelve. Okay. When I give you all your hisoyo, this is instructions for all of you. When each of you gets your hisoyo, I want you to just read it prayerfully at first by yourself, and then once you've done that, and take your time. We have plenty of time. Once you've done that, to nominate somebody to read it out loud, and then when you've done that, we'll go from there because I have some some questions that I want you to reflect on. Group number two, your Hosoyo is the consecration of the church, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, in a few weeks. Pages 11 to 13. Pages 11 to 13. Group number three, your Hosoyo is the faithful departed. So it's pages 169 to 171. 169 to 171. Seven, one. Now remember, read it to yourself first, prayerfully, and then nominate someone to read it out loud. And then group number four, your Hosoyo, because we haven't got enough Mary, is the Assumption. So that is pages 598 to 601. 598 to 601. Do this a little bit backwards. I won't start with number one. I'll start with group number four. So announce your Hosoyo. The, the Hosoyo. Somebody, somebody will have to, a representative will have to come up. I do? Yeah, I guess. You have to come up to the microphone. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the microphone. I'm going to be your little, your beamer here. Announce your announce your Hosoyo and then and let us and let us know. Announce your Hosoyo. Excuse me, just a minute there. Let me hold that for you. Let me hold it. No, no, I'm gonna hold it. Well, I Hosoyo was we'll see if you do this. Uh, about our blessed the assumption of the blessed mother. Oh. And it was awesome. And these are some of the thoughts that they gave me. Um, for just the first part or for all of them? No, no, whatever you want to share. It's supposed to be mutually enriching. This was about the Blessed Mother, her birth and her assumption. This is about the Blessed Mother in Christ, Christ in the Virgin, and forgiveness. Also, we, they taught us about the plan of salvation. Uh, someone was touched by who was at the assumption, Peter, John, Thomas, from the places they were from, and it is asking us to be a part of forgiveness for the whole church. And the ways it touched us is the mother of God was honored. When you think of Jesus, you can't help but think of Mary. When you think of Mary, you can't help but think of Jesus. And we thank God at the end that he gave us his mother. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That is really quintessentially Maronite. We can't separate Mary and Jesus. That's why, the icon. That's why the icon is always with the icon of the Madonna is never by herself. It's always the Madonna and child. We can't separate. That's brilliant. Yes. Are we the only church that gives Mary the reverence and the sanctity that we do in the Catholic Church? I know that other churches. Praise Mary. Orthodox the are, are good at honoring her. They, they do honor her. Yes, absolutely. We're way, way up there, aren't I, in our devotion? We, we, are. we are. We are. We are. We are, definitely. Who is group number three? Okay. 
Come on up soon. So just, yeah, those are stiff, oh, sorry, yeah. So name your Vesoyo and uh, let us know what reflection points you have. Sue. We uh, have a commemoration of the faithful departed. And... And the themes that we came up with were um, the hope of the resurrection, that we should all live our lives uh, with the understanding and the hope that our lives will be united in God forever. Um, so, wonderful. And that we will have a glorious entry into heaven, along with all the saints and uh, the people who have gone before us, that we are, our kingdom is not here, but our kingdom is to come in union with God. And that we should always maintain uh, hope for eternal life. And that we don't live two separate realities. We don't have life here and then life after death. That it's one reality that's united in God and that we have Hope in the resurrection always. And keep the faith. When things get tough, uh, remember where we're going and what's before us forever. So how did this speak to us? Um, a reminder that we should offer prayers for the deceased always to remember the souls in purgatory who are on their way uh, to perfect union with God that we should always keep them in prayer and keep them in our hearts. Um, that we are united in life and in death. Um, you know, our family members, our loved ones, they were here with us and they'll be here with us forever. And we don't see them, but they're near. And they're interceding for us and one day we'll all be united again. Um, uh, recall that God listens to our voices and hears our prayers. So to keep praying always, uh, knowing that God will hear us and that God will have mercy, tender mercy on us, that God is tender. So, amen. Very nice. Group number three, uh, number two. Take a Group number two. Oh, here comes the subject. No. Let me hold that for you. Announce your Vesoyo. We had the renewal of the church, uh, the consecration of the church, which is the beginning of the, of the Vesoyo. And the, so what is it telling me? The church is invincible. God is coming to touch each of us through the church. We glorify God by proclaiming the, the fortress of the church, and by renewing our faith in the church. And um, we can all be united with God. And one of them mentioned fathers talk about the thin line. She, she made that connection from Father's uh, homily this morning, that, that we really can touch God, and God will touch us. And that's part of the process of renewing the church as a sacred place to visit. Teaching me, what is it teaching me? How the church uh, encourages people to connect with the divine through the church, in the church, in the services. And then I just kept hearing the same, what's it telling me, what's it teaching me? So again, the renewal of the church is a time when each of us are reminded of the power and the fortress and the invincibility of the church and how the divine connects us through that process of worshiping God. And finally, how it personally touched me, um, the fact that we're united with God's heavenly, again, the thin line, it's really happening. You know, so many people, and people were sort of getting energetic at our table. Some people sort of talk about, oh yeah, God's there, God's there. But our married theology, it's happening. God is present. And right now, right here, all the time. And if we pay attention, and in the renewal of the church, that beginning us to, to pay attention, being in this temple, 
we can allow that connection to happen. And you can encourage it and nurture it and that kind of thing. So, and me personally, it gives me security to just get out of bed in the morning. Uh, you know, this life, if you, as aware as we all are with the internet and with everything going on, it's a scary world. I get so much peace and security in the faith here in the church. And so for me personally, the renewal of the church is kind of like, okay, I'm going to do another year. Just keep going one foot in front of the other. And then um, someone said that being part of the Maronite church was a privilege um, to be part of this wonderful, beautiful theology and liturgy. And they felt privileged to be a Maronite. So that's what touched them. Beautiful reflections, really. Let me see. One more group. Yes. Group number one. <laughs> Announce you on the soil. And what I found interesting was three of us at this table are fairly new to this church. And so we kind of shared why, you know, why we came um, to this church. And, but basically, the cross is always present. It's a, we celebrate a season of it, which um, Diane brought out. Like, it's not just a symbol that we see at certain times of the year. It's, it's present constantly. It's exalted. We give it... Um, um, you know, with such a priority in our lives, it gives joy to all people. Um, I came from a religion that um, discouraged, they said, uh, be good so you don't go to hell. Instead of, you know, enjoy the joy that God gives you, that's why you should be good. Big difference. So when I see the cross, I think of his love, his, his grace in me. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Diane uh, points out, or Danielle, I should say, the cross points out sacrifice is necessary in order to truly love and to give up yourself, just as Christ did for us. Um, it touches me personally. Uh, it was brought up that it deflects evil. It, uh, it's a refuge and a shelter. You always turn to your cross and need for privilege. Um, darkness disappears. This is truly a liturgy of light. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, you, I'll just give this back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I gotta say, all of your reflections, I had goosebumps in some of the things you came up with. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to mutually enrich one another through these very deep prayers. Yes? Three of us grew up in this church. Uh -huh. And before we spoke, we all three of us said we never grew up with the fire and brimstone and uh -huh. scary stuff. Yes. If you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. Yes. We weren't taught that. Right. It was positive. Yes, always. Yes. Actually, if you read throughout the Maronite liturgy, this whole theme of mercy. Mercy, mercy and tenderness, you touched upon that. Gosh, it comes out so, so brilliantly. So, speaking of prayer, Mother is uh, mother, and, and the sisters and I, we're going to lead you in some prayer time upstairs. So, um, if you just close your uh, Corbono books and bring them back with you as you make your way towards the back stairs. Sure, and Mother will give you further instructions. Thank you. You guys, you guys did great. Thank you so much.